So thank you, everyone, for coming to the webinar. Uh, if you want to. Yes, welcome to our first adoption webinar. Um, there's more to come this year. Um, we'd like to introduce, let me introduce myself first. I'm Jiminato Labisama, Regional Education Manager here at Google, focused on the UK. And this is Devin. Hi, everyone. My name is Devin Regis. I focus on adoption across all of EMEA, but with a specific focus on the UK. Awesome. So now we have a very special guest here, um, Des O'Connor. He's the IT coordinator from one of our reference schools, Handcross. Uh, so I'll give it up to him, and then he's going to take you through his journey. And if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to just type in the comments. Take it away, Des. OK, thank you. I'm going to share my screen. So um, my name is Des O'Connor, and um, we I'm going to talk for you, to you guys about how we went through the process of adopting um, G Suite for education at our school, Handcross Park. And I'm going to break it into sort of two parts, really. One is about sort of our journey to where we've got to. And one, uh, the second part is about some of my tips that I would give you for introducing G Suite and Chromebooks um, to a school environment. So we are a pretty rural school um, in the south of England, um, as you can see. And we are, as has been mentioned by Jim, a Google reference school. So when we first started this, this journey with, with Google, um, it was in the summer of 2013. So about four years ago now, at the end of this term, I would have started at Handcross. And at Handcross, there was in, on the internet speeds about one megabytes per second. Um, there was no wireless uh, network at all or infrastructure. All the PCs, Windows XP, and there were absolutely no portable devices um, for the pupils to use, no laptops, tablets, or anything. There was only actually one IT suite in the whole school that all the pupils had to go and visit. Um, and there was a lot of poor maintenance and care of the existing infrastructure uh, around the school and um, here's an example of some of the pictures here so we had dust and cabling everywhere um, extension leads it was actually uh, unbelievable and some people having to as you can see in the top right hand corner plug extension leads into projectors when they wanted to use them because there was no electricity um, available so one of the third first things i did was have a big clear out of some of the old technology. This was all the stuff that was broken um, from the server room that we all just threw out. And in 2014, so within literally a term and a summer, we introduced our first set of one-to-one -one Chromebooks um, out to the year eight in the school. Um, now we have one-to-one -one Chromebook provision for years five through to year eight. And the staff also have Chromebooks that they can use as well. Now, the Chromebooks and technology in the school are really driving the delivery of the curriculum now that we have the, the platform in place. So in the bottom right hand corner picture here, we also got rid of some of those projector based displays and introduced interactive LEDs as well, which has really helped um, with our teaching. Also, because we have Chromebooks all the way from the pre-prep um, reception age all the way through, we're able to really link all our curriculum um, together between the pre-prep and prep schools because everyone's using Chromebooks and everyone's using Google Classroom. We've been able to introduce 3D design and, and printing as well. Uh, which you previously weren't able to do. Um, and even though we're obviously Chromebooks and cloud-based, you can do 3D design and 3D printing still on the devices. One of our big things we've had this summer is we've been actually able to update the um, IT room that I mentioned earlier. So as you can see from the images, it was all standalone PCs um, in not particularly great layout for teaching. In the bottom right hand corner, you can see that there was no interactive display. It was literally a projector projecting onto a normal whiteboard. 
Um, so this summer we we're able to completely redo our IT room in a bit more of a standard um, classroom layout so that other lessons and classes could actually use the IT room um, as well. And that actually saved us money because we didn't have to get in a porter cabin or, or construct a new classroom around the school. And we wouldn't have been able to do that without one-to-one -one Chromebooks. So last term, we were also able to have Google Expeditions um, into the school and the Google Expeditions Pioneer program. And as you can see, the children were pretty excited about doing that. And if you've not seen um, Google Expeditions or Google Cardboard, do check that out. I think that's going to be the next big thing in education. We've also been able to have Google Hangout lessons, joint lessons um, around the world with other schools. Um, and all that's what happened all the way down from year four all the way up to year eight. So this particular image you have here is us in being introduced to an, a school in New Jersey via um, Classroom Bridges, which is a great resource for linking in with other schools. We've also actually been able to teach internally in school through different classrooms um, using tools. So if a teacher wants to deliver a, a, a particular topic and they're not that confident on how to use the technology, I've been able to help them out by linking together via video link um, to the classrooms. So obviously the main people that are using the Chromebooks are the pupils and here we have a little write-up um, from one of our year six pupils and basically I think this gets to the core of the situation here at Handcross especially is our homework and being able to access the homework and keeping everything organized so as this pupil was mentioned here there's no excuses like the dog ate my homework because the dog would find it difficult to eat your Chromebook um, so a bit of humor there and here we have another pupil talking about how connecting with the school is easier checking the homework again um, and getting the feedback quickly as well and if the teacher is not here they can put the cover work and instru instructions on google classroom which has been a great help over the past sort of year and a bit so here we have a little survey response um, about how the chromebooks are valued and as we can see here through the different subjects um, on the left hand side of our prep or homework you can see that in science especially and helping with the prep and obviously some subjects lean itself better to the use of um, Chromebooks and technology than others but as you can see still it's pretty highly regarded for helping with the completion of prep and homework and for the feedback as, as well if you look on the right hand side and giving effective feedback to the pupils work. We've also been able to create our own apps that we can apply to Chromebooks and we can actually pin them to the Chromebooks through the use of the, uh, the management console. And here we just have a little example of the, the prep app that I created, which is really simple and it's just a published um, Google sheet that the staff fill in and the pupils press on it and it's just a published version um, so they can see their prep. And it's really simple but quite effective. We've also been able to improve our safeguarding um, because we're actually able to monitor individual devices. Uh, we use Go, Go Guardian here on this campus, but you can use Securely or there's lots of other third party tools um, that you can use. And that's really helped us improve our, our safeguarding and, and e-safety awareness. In terms of our admin use, we've been able to drive our activities um, so the parents in the past had to fill in bits of paper and hand them in at the office and we had to collate them all um, and that was one of my big things when I first started and I looked at it and I was like this is ridiculous and we need to do this in a more efficient way so just by using a Google form we were actually able to create um, an activities form that the parents could fill in and select their activities for their children to participate in and it has really simplified things and we're also able to publish that through um, our parent portal so the parents can actually see the activities and we've actually been able to link in a lot of our 
Google Docs and Google Drive and our Google Sites and things into our um, school information system, our parent portal, so that the parents can access the information. Also, we have our, our staff training. So this is a really big, important thing when you're trying to um, deliver G Suite within the school. So when I first started, I started off and I developed my own program that I just called G Teacher Award, and the teachers would get different certificates for the level that they achieved. Um, and some staff went on and actually did a, an admin award as well. So using the admin console and supporting me in my role as an administrator. Then when Google introduced the Google certification and the Google Certified Educator Awards, um, I move more to using that resource um, because it's pretty compre comprehensive and covers a lot of areas that my G Teacher Award didn't. And as you can see for the rundown here, there's lots of different levels. This is taken from the Educator Level 1, and you can see there's all sort of good categories that the, the staff can work through. And the main thing is actually is that a lot of the staff haven't taken the um, educator exam yet but what we have done together is work through all the levels and I do know that some schools like to get in third party third parties to deliver the actual exam side and some of the course as well so some um, third parties offer a Google Educator level one course over two days and they'll deliver all the content and guide you through it on the first day and on the second day guide everyone through the exams as well and the exams can take up to three hours, but normally it will be less than that, um, and you can move through that quite quickly. So it is a bit of time, but it's well worth doing. And here we can see that getting everyone together on an inset is really useful as well, because everyone can help each other, um, and you can guide everyone through what they need to do. Now I'm going to slow down a little bit here. Um, and really go through my tips for deploying G Suite and Chromebooks through a school. So the first tip is there are lots of existing resources out, out there um, and deployment guides. So this particular one with the, the URL at the top right hand corner that you may want to jot down or make note of, um, this is excellent. This really gives you a comprehensive guide of how to adopt um, G Suite in your environment. When I first started, a lot of these tools weren't around and also I, I wasn't aware of all the support that you could have. So I was a bit of a lone wolf when I went at this myself and I really wish I'd made more use of everything that was out there so that I could maybe deliver uh, what I achieved in a slightly different way. So make sure you use all the existing resources. I cannot emphasize that enough. And if you're just beginning on this and you've not even gone through the steps of registering your domain or anything, this is excellent. But even if you're part way through and you've not used it yet, please do take a look at it. My second tip is please make sure you get buy-in from your management. So when I started here, the technology, as you saw, was, was quite poor. And basically, we had to do everything really quickly. And I had to really push everything through. Because when I started, in my job interview, I was a, part of my job was, can you deliver one-to-one -one, um, devices with our pupils? And so obviously, I went with that. And I really attacked it. And I chose G Suite. and we chose Chromebooks as well, but the management maybe didn't keep up with me all the way along. And so now they've caught up after four years, but initially they were like, yes, this is great, fantastic, well done, but maybe not understanding everything that went with that. So do make sure that you're having regular meetings. Do they understand what it means? Don't just let them brush you off with, yes, that's well done, or that they're not really 
interested as long as you're sort of delivering something make sure that they're really educated all the way through because you'll get to a point and without the support it can be a real challenge and also you have to then bring them up to speed so make sure they're also included in as many of your training sessions as possible so my next tip is sign up for the Google Plus groups that are available to you. There are lots out there and they really are an excellent resource. And if you can't find anything in the Google Help and the deployment guides, you can always post questions out there and people out there are excellent and they'll be willing to share and give advice. Now, my main go to groups are the GEG UK groups. So the Google Educator Group UK and the G Suite for Education Admins Group. Um, now the G Suite for Education Admins Group is sort of worldwide. There's people from all around the world. So that's always a good go-to because a lot of these guys have a lot of experience. And obviously the GEG UK group is specific for the UK. And there's a lot of knowledge in that group as well. And especially about the UK education system. But there are plenty more to choose from. There's ones on Google Expeditions, Google Classroom, uh, Chromebooks. So there are a lot to choose from. So this is more for the techies in a way. But if you are someone that is driving this and you are an educator, I really do suggest that you have a look at the admin console as well. And get to grips with it and understanding of it and what it can do because if you can understand what it can do you'll be able to really drive everything forward in your school um, it's all very well having a meeting with sort of the IT support team who will know about this and saying what you want and can you do this but if you understand it yourself it will really help in my school here it's sort of a one-man band I am the person and I have an IT support company that works with me but I am the person that not only teaches um, because I teach the computer studies in the school I teach games I support other staff as well in their teaching um, I am also the administrator but I can see the direct impact that what we do on the admin console has on lessons so things like deploying apps managing apps making sure the resources are there for the staff um, testing things, are they working, do websites work on the Chromebooks, can you get out of the way, that, those sort of things out of the way, so when you go to use them in lessons and your staff are using them in lessons, they just work, because as anyone knows, when you're in a lesson and if something doesn't work, that can be really frustrating and people do lose confidence. So if you can, get to grips with the admin console, have a look around, explore, look on the get groups look on YouTube there's some great videos out there of how to do things so you can understand how how it all works um, this is one more for the techies um, out there so preparing your infrastructure and I do put that quite high because if your infrastructure is not there then you can't do your training you can't get people on board um, you can't show how well the devices or the G Suite can work on whatever device you're using. So obviously you need good internet connection. So um, after I arrived, it was one megabytes per second. We went up to 20 megabytes per second download, 20 megabytes per second upload, which was not great, but we managed to survive. And in this summer, just gone, we went up to 100 megabytes per second down, 100 megabytes per second up. And hopefully in the future we'll be able to increase that even more but do make sure you get a good internet connection obviously you'll need a robust wireless network um, for whatever device you use Chromebooks will require wireless iPads laptops whatever you decide to use do make sure you get a robust wireless network so that wherever the devices are being used on your site they are working as fully as they can Something that some people don't think about maybe is making sure your firewall and filtering rules are all in place to allow the full use of the G Suite environment and whatever tools you are using. 
Um, so when I started, we, we did have a few issues um, with things working because I just assumed that everything would work straight through and it didn't. And I'm sort of glad that it caused me problems and not a lot of the staff problems. So do make sure you do that and that everything's tested and that everything is in place. So again, when the teachers go to use the devices in their lessons and the pupils are using them, everything is working for them. Do get some devices in place to use as quickly as possible. We had a trial bank of Chromebooks here that staff were able to borrow, um, that whole classes were able to borrow out for their lessons, um, to use and to trial so that you can see how it works in your environment and how you and how staff can use them in their lessons. If you are not in the IT support team um, and you're an educator but you're trying to drive the introduction of G Suite, do work closely with your IT support team on this so that you can get everything that I've mentioned previously in place and working and that they're working with you and on board with you as well in the, de the, de the deployment of G Suite and Chromebooks or whatever devices you decide to use. And as I've mentioned quite often, there is nothing worse than things not working when you go to use them and when you go to do your training uh, as confidence can be lost. So here um, we had the wireless network put in place over the summer and I went to do inset training and there was no wireless and it was as simple as the wireless access points had actually not been connected <laughs> properly and our IT support company who had subcontracted the wireless infrastructure being put in place were not aware of this. So I'd walked in, assumed the Chromebooks would work, and they didn't. So that was a knock straight away. So make sure that everything is in place, everything is tested before you go for a big training session with all your staff or everyone starts to use the Chromebooks. And my next tip, get the core group of staff trained. So obviously when I started this, um, I was the main person pushing this. I trained myself how to use all the tools um, and how to get to grips of everything. But trying to do this alone is literally impossible. Um, we're a relatively small school here. We have about 80 odd staff, um, about 370 pupils. So it's not a massive site, but even here, getting all the information out to everyone, getting all the staff trained, um, even with only, he says, 80 staff, would be, is extremely challenging. So having the support of just a few extra staff that you've pinpointed and who are enthusiastic can make all the difference. So basically they want to be your staff digital leaders, whatever you want to call them. Um, I call them my chromies, um, it's a bit cheesy I know, not my choice, but that's what they asked to be called. So they are my chromies and they are my staff digital leaders and all the other staff also know to go to them as well as me. And also by getting them on board and showing them how everything could work and get them also enthusiastic because they can see what the impact of what these tools can have in their lessons. And you can rely on them to help support your training and disseminate that knowledge for all the rest of the staff. So we've been able to run training sessions where they've been in the same room supporting me, walking around, making sure everything, everyone's okay through little things like can the other staff actually just even log in? Or we've broken out into different rooms and they've been able to deliver some of the training whilst I've been concentrating on, on other elements of training as well. As I've said, training, tip seven, plenty of training. So I cannot emphasize this enough and this is something that we did not do very well at the start of this because as you've seen previously, we had a lot to do and the technology frankly here was extremely poor. Um, and we weren't even using the basic technology that we had very well. So I sort of had to make that decision of literally, here we go, here are Chromebooks, here's G Suite, 
here's Google Drive, here's Google Docs, this is what we're using, and dropped it in the staff lap. And it was quite a, a baptism of fire for all the teaching staff. So I know through little problems like, as I mentioned, wireless not working, things not working as well as they could, um, some staff not being here or being away, um, their confidence was knocked um, because they weren't being able to have the training that maybe they needed to access the tools. So by having plenty of training, you will keep confidence high in the staff and how they're using the tools in their lesson. Do you make sure that when you're giving your training that staff are consistent in the use of the tools? So how they are using it. Are you using Google Classroom, for instance, instance um, consistently? Are you people putting their aims of, of, are they using their, uh, putting on, on their learning objectives? Are they um, applying and adding documents and work correctly to the Google Classroom. Part of this process is using the existing training tools such as Google Educator, but you must add on your own sort of policies, if you like, if you like, of how you want staff to use the tools. And that's part of developing your own, own training tools and methods. So and because training was time was very valuable and short, and again, as I went back to, management maybe didn't understand the full requirements at the start of what we needed to do to deliver this effectively. We had to introduce things like twilight sessions, video link training sessions using Google Hacking Apps, so, so getting some staff um, on a weekend on a Saturday morning all linking together to be able to, to deliver the training, or even if you're in school delivering the twilight sessions, get some of the part-time staff who have found it hard to access your training sessions um, in school on inset days and things, get them to link in um, with video links so they can access your training sessions as well. Obviously, if you can get inset days and sessions given over to you on inset days, do push for that. I found that that is the most effective way of delivering the training. Also a good thing that we started to introduce is joint lesson planning sessions so that you as the person delivering um, the G Suite rollout, the adoption of G Suite, can be there but also some other staff and maybe your digital leaders, your staff digital leaders can be there as well and input into the, the joint planning sessions and just the fact that you're obviously going to have a Google Doc that you're going to be sharing, you're going to be working collaboratively on, and the staff themselves through that session can see the power of the tools that are available to them. Um, that's something that's been really effective. And also where we've been working on some of our partner schools as well, I know that some of the staff have started to do this. Also a good thing to do, and that my staff like here, are regular updates on things that via email, sharing documents and resources um, and through a newsletter as well that I do annually on everything that's been coming out in G Suite. Um, a lot of my staff like to have folders in their email inbox that they move my emails to so they can go back to them when it's a good time. Um, but they do like having that resource there as well that they can go back to. We've also used Google Sites as well to deliver some of the training um, and at the start of the year and if things change for the term I always update the Google site to show these are the things that you need to know in order to be able to use the G Suite environment very quickly. And my other little tip on that is to get the admin staff into training sessions early if you can. So even if it's a few hand picked and you're really focusing on um, the education side, it's still good for them to come along and see and have part of the buy-in of this process. And if your budgets allow, use third parties to deliver some of your training sessions. So for me here, when I started, 
obviously I was brought in with this remit of introducing one-to-one -one devices and but a lot of the staff didn't really know me um, I was a newcomer and so I was pushing out all this stuff and people were like oh who is this guy what is this stuff what is this Google Apps for Education as it was called then what is what are these Chromebooks and basically it was me and as over the years obviously it's been me and the staff have really bought into it quite well but sometimes it's a bit of oh it's just Des again talking about what Des wants to talk about so if you can actually get third parties in to show what is actually going on in out in the world and that it is a really big deal that also can have a really huge impact for those people that may be a slightly resisting on the deployment of, of Google in the school. Now, as I alluded to earlier about the admin staff, now this is a mistake that I made at the start. And maybe it was also part of us as a whole management group because I didn't neg neglect the admin staff because a lot of the senior staff who are sort of the administrators saw this as just affecting education but over the years sort of even over the first sort of year of adopting uh, G Suite the teaching staff saw the potential of the tools that we're using and they were like well why are the admin staff not using this why can we not get the admin staff to use this and that's basically because they didn't understand what the tools could do could do so getting these people on side to use G Suite will be invaluable even if it's just a few key players on the admin staff because if you're anything like my school a lot of the, the, the staff have you been have been using Microsoft Office for a long time they've been using their tools that they've wanted to use for a long time and they're very comfortable and a lot of them aren't sort of going to be pushing you back on change but a lot of them want to see the, the benefits of what it brings them. So make training sessions specific to them as well. So the, the end of last year, we had some excuse me, a specific training session to admin. But at the start of this year as well, in the summer, I came in and we delivered some really specific sessions just to the admin team. So we talked about things like the collaboration and what that means shared meeting documents so for a lot of the admin team taking minutes and things like that that becomes slightly unnecessary or we can do it through a shared document and um, demonstrate how to make admin tasks more efficient so obviously i've alluded to things like um the activities we've got things like the newsletter we've now got things like um digital signage um all these things that can make the admin tasks more efficient, the admin team do really appreciate, but they've got to see that for themselves. And we've also got Google Forms now for data collection from parents and also from some of the professional development that we need within the school and things like all our health and safety checks and risk assessments and things like that. The staff can really, the admin staff have now really bought into using the Google Forms because they see how quick and easy that is. And as I mentioned before, the, the marketing team, things like your shared Google Drive for adding images into a drive. Um, and recently this year, we've introduced through Chrome Sign Builder and um, digital signage. Now, my next part, my next tip is to inform and educate parents. Now, I've sort of left this to the last but you can do this at any point in this process. But you've got to make sure that you are really buying into this as, as a faculty, as a whole staff body, before you introduce it to parents. That would be my one big advice, because there's nothing worse than introducing this to parents and them asking other staff and the other staff not really knowing what they are talking about or not really using the tools like we mentioned so last year we started to gently introduce google classroom but a lot of staff were getting caught out because they weren't using google classroom and from this academic year we've made it 
statutory that all the teachers must have Google Classroom, even if they are doing things like art and things like that, they must have Google Classroom. So this means that they're going to be fully informed before they start talking to parents. Now run plenty of information sessions for parents at the start of this process. And every year I still run an information evening. Um, and this is mainly for year four parents that are going into year five next year, as obviously their children will be having Chromebooks one to one. So there's a lot more information for them to understand. But I do do this all the time for all the stuff, all the parents, so that they are fully aware. Part of the process to actually get them to try the tools as well and have a little go of some of the things that they can do. So I often um, do Kahoot. Kahoot is a great online quiz that you can use with your pupils. But I do this as part of my session with the parents. I get them to go on a, a Google Chromebook on a guest session and they can access the Kahoot and they can take part in that. They can also use the collaboration side of a shared Google document just to see the power of that tool. Now make sure they understand how this can benefit their children. This is an important thing, but also how it can benefit them. So things like prep, completion, homework. So the prep app I mentioned earlier that is basically a published sheet is also available through the parent portal so the parents can actually see that as well. Um, if you can show videos of the benefits to the children and what the impact can be, that's great. Or even get external speakers in to help. Because sometimes, as you can imagine, some parents um, are a bit worried about screen time and the use of Chromebooks and that it's going to take over. So if you can get another third party to come in and talk about their experience and their impact, that's great. And if you can get on-site parents, if you have them in your school, that have experienced this, so I'm quite lucky we've been doing this for a few years now, and we can get some really good positive parents coming in and talking to the next cohort of parents coming through to get them on side as well. So I whizzed through that a little bit. I know I'm a bit there early on time, but I'd like to thank you for listening to my presentation here, and I hope that advice comes in useful for you guys if you're in the early stages of adopting this or even part way through. Um, I have made mistakes along the way, as I've said. So please make sure that you use those resources I pointed out at the start. So the deployment guides and the G plus groups, the GEG UK groups, the Google Suite for administrators group as well, but any other Google plus groups you see um, out there and also Google themselves because they are really excellent at supporting you on deploying G Suite to your school. Okay, thank you ever so much. Thanks, thank you. Um, all right, perfect. Um, so Gem and I are monitoring the questions that are coming through um, via the YouTube live chat. So if you do have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat right now and, and you know, we can tag team with Des to get those answered. And then if not, uh, you know, we'll hang on the line for a few more minutes, but we'll also make sure to send out a wrap up of what was talked about today and especially all those great resources that Des mentioned. Uh, we'll be able to send links to everyone in a follow up email as well. If any questions coming through. No questions. Lots of people saying great tips. Death. <laughs> yeah. <you're true. laughs> Very informative. Mm -hmm. uh, also, don't have your phone on in the background. Oh, um, right. <laughs> <laughs> so. Just shows we're all human. <laughs> well, I obviously managed to cover everything then. <laughs> Here he says. All right, so Michael Ward is wondering, hi Daz, which Chromebook did you use? Um, so when we started off, we used old Samsung ones that people might remember, the old C303s. Um, and then we actually moved because Samsung stopped producing um, Chromebooks for a while. They've come back on the scene. But uh, I moved over to Acer. So we actually sort of partnered with Acer now as well. So I've used Ace, 
Acer C720, the C730, and actually next year we're going with the ruggedized um, Acer Chromebook 11 N7, which is the ruggedized ones. And that's one thing I would actually add maybe is if you're looking at deploying Chromebooks through a particular supplier, go for the ruggedized ones, look at warranties and things like that as well that you can get because they're, they're invaluable as well. Good point. Nice. Another one? Oh, uh, no. Um, Someone's just saying we still have some of them now and they're on to HP. Yeah. So I'm going to be replaced. We've actually got the Samsung C303 still going, but <laughs> obviously their support ends in October 2017. And one thing I should add is that actually now the support for devices has, has increased um, from Google as well. So where it used to be four years, I think it's now seven years or something that it's gone up to. So have a look on your models if you've already got some in place and um, have a look and see what how long the support goes on for. Awesome. Right. So Michael Ward says thanks. <laughs> Welcome. Awesome. All right. We can hang on for maybe another minute or two if anyone wants to post. Otherwise, like we mentioned before, we'll send out a breadth of links to the EDU training center and the certifications and the IT guide that does mention just to make sure everyone feels supported and um, highly recommend joining the, the GG UK or the GEG UK that was mentioned um, where a bunch of resources and tips and where we'll post about things like this webinar and future events as well. Great, we have um, a couple more questions roll in. Um, from Scott Griffiths, do you have any Chrome bases? Uh, we actually have, don't have any Chrome bases at the moment. Um, basically, what we decided to do with the device, because as I mentioned before, my staff are very dependent on certain tools, as it were. So our front of class computers are still Microsoft. I do know a lot of schools, like in science labs and things, that manage um, or use Chrome and Chromebooks. Have actually switched out to Chrome boxes because they have the existing monitors and they just plug straight into the monitors that already exist. So that saves you money on getting having to get extra tools and monitors and peripherals that you need because you just swap the Chromebooks in. Um, so yeah, we don't have many here. But the only one I have actually I use in the office. So <laughs> awesome. Um, we have another question. Um, this is from Julian Handrill. What about Gmail and safeguarding, i.e. LGFL provide a safe email environment for schools and students? Um, what's really great about this question is that uh, we are working with LGFL at the moment to be able to provide uh, Gmail to schools or G Suite for education for schools using their LGFL uh, mail. So if you want to go to um, lgfl.net slash services slash Google Apps, um, you'll come to the G Suite page. Um, and then you can go directly uh, to LGFL to help them sign you up. And if you really want to focus on just using the LGFL mail itself, you can turn off Gmail. Um, in terms of security and safeguarding, we have the, G, the Google Trust site that will answer all your questions around security and privacy, um, as well as contacting your uh, LGFL support line. And at all, an extra tip on that as well, is that you can actually restrict Gmail to just your domain as well. So if you're worried about pupils interacting with people outside, you can restrict it to your domain, et cetera, et cetera. So there's lots of things you can really go down into in the admin console and control on that. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, we're not allowed to post hyperlinks in the chat on YouTube. So that's why we're not sending out any of these links to you over the chat. Um, but we will include them in the follow-up email. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, no, that's mm -hmm. it. Oh, you're welcome, Julian. <laughs> cool. These are all great questions. All right. I think that's it for now. Okay. Um, thank you so much, everyone. We'll try and do this a bit more often um, and give other uh, reference schools a chance. But great. First one, Des, um, you are amazing and great tips. So if you have any questions or concerns, um, Des is also very active on um, the GEG UK page. So feel free to, to reach out to them there. Hope that's OK, Des. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Right. Bye, guys. Thanks, everyone.